Hello again. Uh, in this video, we are talking about cosine graph and its transformations. In the previous video, we talked about sine graphs and their transformations. So real quickly, what did we discuss? Uh, we talked about sine function and that the regular parent function equation is y equals sine x. When sine graph is graphed using a theta on y x-axis and sine values or sine of that particular theta on y-axis, we end up with this sort of graph for sine. Sine graph passes to the origin. And again, we're talking about the parent function here. Sine parent function passes through the origin. Uh, the period is listed by 2 pi, which means that's about how long it takes to complete one revolution or one rotation or one cycle. Uh, amplitude is given by the height or, or, or the distance from the average to the highest point on the wave. This is what we talked about previously. Then we also talked about uh, the transformations that can happen to the parent function and the jobs of A, B, C, and D in the given equation of uh, sine or parent function. A is listed as the amplitude. Uh, we did B is listed as uh, the frequency and period can be obtained by following this formula. C is responsible for the horizontal shift, which means moving to the right or left as compared to the parent. Remember, everything is being compared to the parent graph or the parent equation. And then D's responsibility or job is to reflect if there is a vertical shift, either vertically up or vertically down. In this video, as I said, we are talking about cosine graphs. Now, what if I take the theta values and graph it against the cosine value for that particular theta? When I do that, I should be able to get a cosine graph. And that's what this graph is. So real quickly, let me show you how it's constructed. Uh, again, we are doing theta versus cosine of theta. Okay, so theta will be in radians. So when radians is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So the point here is reflected as 0, 1. Why 1? Because cosine is the x-coordinate. Okay, so 0, 1, that's the point right there. Uh, let's pick some, um, we don't have to go through all of them, so let's say the next one is pi over 3. The pi over 3, the corresponding cosine value is half, and that's that point reflected right there. Pi over 2 cosine value is 0, so by the time we get to pi over 2 or 90 degrees, the cosine value is 0, and hence the point is on x-axis. If you keep going, 2 pi over 3 would be right here, corresponding, oops, not this one corresponding cosine value for this is the is negative half and that's what that point is moving on to pi cosine would be negative one and that's the bottom most point that it reaches and that completes half a revolution and hence we have reached half a point half mark of the cycle if i continue with the other side or the other half of the revolution we will end up with some of these points when we connect them we end up with cosine graph so this is the cosine graph. Now you might be thinking that this looks exactly same as the sine graph. What's the, what's the difference? Well, these two are sinusoidal waves, which means that they, the parent function of sine and cosine, so cosine theta or cosine x, the parent function is pretty much the same except there is a slight horizontal shift. And one can be written as the other. And we will learn about this as we progress along the lesson. Now speaking of, now that we have a trig function, all functions have characteristics, right? Some of the main or basic characteristics are listed here. So let's look at the domain here. Uh, just like the sine function, the domain here is going to be all real numbers because this is a very smooth graph. And keep in mind, this continues in both directions. However, the blue part here is um, uh, depicting or donating, not depicting one cycle one revolution, one rotation. There are no holes here, no asymptotes. Um, all values of x are acceptable and hence all real numbers. Another way to write that is negative infinity to infinity. Uh, speaking of the range, the highest point that this graph 
takes is 1, and the lowest possible point on this graph is negative 1, and all the values in between them. Both 1 and negative 1 are inclusive, so negative 1 to 1 and square parentheses, just like the sine function, no difference. Uh, in set notation, I'm going to go y where y do it again y where y is less than equal to 1 and at the same time greater than equal to negative 1 in our curly parentheses then speaking of odd and even function just like we discussed in sine functions odd and even is basically described by the symmetry of the graph based off of y-axis or the origin now if if you imagine this being continued we can tell that y-axis is acting like a mirror, right? Whatever is on the right side of the y-axis, there's a reflection of that on the other side of y-axis as well, which tells me that cosine is an even function. Then comes in the period, and period again is one revolution, one rotation, which is 2 pi for cosine as well, just like for sine. Maximum value achieved is 1. Now the maximum value occurred, it occurs at 0 radians, then the next maximum value is right here at 2 pi. Then the next maximum value will again be plus 2 pi, which will be 4 pi. And this will continue in that direction unless we have restricted domain. Minimum value taken here, as you can see, the bottom most point is negative 1. And minimum point also occurs at certain particular theta values. The first minimum value, or, or at least the first positive minimum value, is at pi. And guess what? The next one will be plus 2 pi to it. Why am I adding 2 pi? Because that's the period of this function. It starts repeating itself every 2 pi. So if the minimum, first minimum is at pi, the next minimum is going to be pi plus 2 pi, which is 3 pi. The one after that will be 3 pi plus 2 pi, which will be 5 pi. Yeah, and these are, I'm listing the positives only. This continues on the other side as well. Okay, so here are some basic characteristics of cosine function. So now let's look at them side by side together. The top one is a sine function, the bottom one is the cosine function. A sine function generally passes through the origin, the parent. Again, remember, we're talking about their parents, not after transformation. These are parents for both of them. Passes through the origin, halfway through, it reaches zero again. Uh, then goes in the other direction, reaches the minimum point, and by the time one complete revolution is achieved, it is 2 pi, and after that, it starts repeating itself. Cosine, on the other end, reaches its maximum value at 0. Okay. So if I highlight from here, if I, if I trace it down as this, let me use a different color, okay, 0, starting at 0, if I highlight this and then back to 0 again, you can see this highlighted part is the same. So cosine basically is sine, except it doesn't pass through the origin. Okay. So one can be considered to be a horizontal shift of the other. Okay. However, I'm not going to highlight this yellow here. Sine passes through the origin and cosine. Think of cosine as starting here and making a little curvy V instead. All right, so that's the only difference. They both have the same amplitude, 1 to negative 1. They both have the same period, 0 to 2 pi. Uh, they both have, um, what else? Same amplitude, same pi. No vertical shift parent. Parent is situated around x-axis. So keep that also in mind. Both parent function of sine and cosine, they are wrapped around x-axis. As long as they're wrapped around x-axis, there is no vertical shift, okay? So these are two side by side. Now if I take both of them and put them on the same graph, this is what they'll look like. The blue one is the sine function. See if you can tell the difference. The blue one is sine, and I need to know where to stop. That's important. It's important to know where to stop for each cycle. It starts here and then stops right there. This is one cycle and continuous on both sides. And the pink one is the cosine function. And you can see this one starts here. One cycle is represented from the highest most point to the highest most point. All right, these are both of them side by side. All right, then comes in now that if we have basic understanding of cosine, can we perform some transformations with cosine? 
What understanding did we get for cosine so far? The cosine is represented as y equals cosine of x, the parent function, and its graph, unlike that of sine, does not pass through the origin. In fact, at zero, the period is 2 pi, so maximums are reached at the start and the end of a cycle. And right in the middle, which is pi, is going to reach its minimum value, quarter and three quarters. It's going to pass through the quarter, reach the minimum at half point, come back to the three quarters, and reach the maximum value at two pi. Okay, and then continue, continue. All right, these are my, this is the parent cosine function graph and equation. So transformations, again, A, B, C, D, A, cosine, I'm just going to replace sine with cosine, B, x minus C plus D, A, B, C, and D, they have their own jobs to do, right? And they have the exact same job. A refers to the amplitude, that is too thick, not so fun. Amplitude of the wave, B is going to tell me, I can use B to find period, or I can use um, P to find B, and I can use B to find P, vice versa. C, on the other hand, is responsible for horizontal shift, which means to the left or right. If, if the graph shifts from where the parent is at, then C represents horizontal shift. And on the other hand, D is responsible for vertical shift, which goes up or down. All right, same job. One last thing. A negative here represents reflection oh that is pretty awesome right there reflection over x-axis if there is a negative or else there is no reflection let's look at some examples ba boom here's my first example example one y equals 2 cosine x plus 3b so i can obviously see this is a cosine function so i think to myself the cosine function graph um, starts at 1, the first cycle, goes halfway down, reaches the minimum point, and comes back up here, 2 pi. I just showed you this earlier, but we can never write it enough. This is negative 1, 1 fourth passes through this, and 3 quarters passes through the um, x-axis, or the x-intercept. So these two are the x-intercepts, basically, right? Keep that in mind. So when I compare it to the ABCD equation, cosine, and then b, and then x minus c plus d, I can clearly tell that amplitude has been uh, modified. The new amplitude is 2. And then b is reflective of 3. Now, again, in class also I mentioned you can look at b as the frequency or how fast or slow the wave is. If b is greater than 1, then that means it's a pretty fast wave. Fast wave means it's going to cover the same amount of distance, you can call it, in less time right this is going three times faster so as compared to the parent cosine this is going to cover it's going to make three complete revolutions in that same period anyway on the side a is two b is three c and d do i notice any horizontal shift no our equation stops at x so obviously c and d remain unchanged as compared to the parent now that I have b, I'm going to quickly find the period. Formula for that is 2 pi over b, so 2 pi over b is 3, and that's the period. Why did I put the period or find the period out? Because without period, I really don't know how long it takes for it to complete one cycle. Now I'm going to go ahead and mark 2 pi over 3, and I know that this, within from 0 to 2 pi over 3, I have to make sure that this graph completes one cycle. Okay, now the normal one, the parent function, completes it in 2 pi. And 2 pi over 3 is only a third of 2 pi. Does that make sense? See, this is 1, 2, and 3. And as I told you, it's 3 times faster. So within the same amount of time, it's going to complete 3 revolutions. So I'm going to keep in mind that I'm going to start my cycle here and end my cycle here. I'm going to, this is the half, this is 1 fourth, this is 3 quarters. Half of 2 pi over 3 is pi over 3, and then half of that is pi over 6. So 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 3. 6 over 6. Okay, there, and then 3 quarters. 
What am I thinking? I started thinking something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what about the amplitude bus? It, it doubled, so we wanna make sure you mark one and negative two, okay? Keep the cosine shape in mind, okay? Unlike sine, it's not gonna pass through the origin. I'm not gonna be doing this. Cosine actually starts from here, and I have to make sure that the cycle completes here. Halfway through, I'm gonna reach the minimum point, and it's gonna pass through zero and then come back through zero here. So here I begin. Oh, not very impressive. I didn't do a very good job. Eh. Oh well. Okay, so here it is. So one cycle of cosine has been completed. Now, the next cycle will be here, and the next one is gonna be here. So as, as I was saying, unlike parent, which is gonna complete one cycle in two pi, this faster wave is going to have com has completed three cycles from zero to two pi and of course this goes on in the other direction as well i'm not too impressed with how i drew it but that's okay i'll forgive myself all right more examples yep more examples determine amplitude and period of this right here again you look at it and you're like oh this is the cosine one so let me register in my mind cosine starts here that's what one cycle looks like. It ends at 2 pi, half bit through, it reaches its minimum point, 1 to negative 1. Okay, so what's going on here? I see negative, so for sure there is a reflection. Number 1. Number 2, amplitude looks like it's 4. Not too bad. B, obviously, is 3. So this is also a fast wave. It's a faster wave, and it's got a higher amplitude, and it's flipped. Right? C, no change. D, no change. So higher, faster, and flipped. See what I said? Higher, faster, and flipped. And how fast? Three times as fast. It's the same thing. So if B is 3, then P will be 2 pi over B, which is 3. And that's an indication that at 2 pi over 3, I'm going to complete one cycle. Actually, if I make it slightly wider, I might have a better graph that way. 2 pi over 3. Halfway through, pi over three, quarter, three quarters, amplitude going up to four, negative four. And ready to graph? Are you ready to graph it with me? Okay. I feel like I should be, again, cosine shape, the V, halfway through, all the way down, three quarters, and then reaches the maximum again. Ba boom, right? No, wrong. If you caught my mistake, be proud of yourself. I did not flip it, right? Yep, so it's going to actually start from here. Just, the pattern is going to be the same. Halfway through reaches a maximum point, then through three quarters of the mark. Eh. Three quarters of the mark. There we go. And there. Yeah, and then from here, it's going to repeat itself. And then keep going and keep going in the other direction. So hopefully that made some sense. Also, this is a fast wave because of the three X. All right. If it was one third, would have been a slower wave. More examples are always better, as they say. So yeah, just make sure we're not going yet. I am not. I hope you're not either. So A is obviously four faster. So the, uh, higher and faster. How fast? Twice as fast. B equals 2, so P is obviously 2 pi over B, which B is 2, so period is pi. So instead of completing one cycle in 2 pi, it's going to complete one cycle in pi. It looks like there is no C again or D again. Correcto. Although I could use this, but I really haven't used the line yet. Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to draw it. There we go. Here's my y axis. My x axis. Okay, let's start with the graph. So remember to mark your period. Normal cosine would complete one revolution in 2 pi, but this one's going to finish it in pi. Half of that, so I'm going to keep in mind this is the start of a cycle, end of a cycle. Half of that, pi over 2. Half of half, pi over 4. 
and then three quarters would be three pi over four, okay? And then amplitude four, amplitude four. Okay, there's no negative, so I don't have to flip it. That original V shape is gonna stay as V shape. I don't have to invert it. And then halfway through, it has to reach minimum. I'm gonna pass through this, pass through that, and then reach maximum again, start at maximum. There we go. If I continue, there we go. Right, so in two pi, it's, good. it's completed two cycles actually. As I said, faster wave, faster and higher, watch out. Okay, here's another one. And if you feel like you're comfortable, there's a challenge question there that I'm going to work on. It's coming up next. Okay, so definitely reflection. I have to keep that in mind. Um, what else? Okay, amplitude is 3. And B is pi over 4. Interesting. Okay, and the equation stopped at C, so again no C, and again no D. No change in C and D. Okay, P is 2 pi over B, so pi over 4. You know you can flip that around. So that's 8, so period is 8. No pi in the period. 0 and 8. And if I put negative 8 on that side, right? Um, oh, it is a flipped version, so I have to keep that in mind. What else? Half of that, half of that, 3 quarters. Got that going. Mark the amplitude. This will be the minimum, maximum, maximum, and let's join it. Oh, and I didn't flip it. Let's flip it. There we go. All right, flipped and done, and then continue. Okay, challenge question here. Yep, this got this has got A, B, C, and D. It's got everything going on. So if I can, if you can just list those at this point of time, that will be more than enough for now. So amplitude two. B is four. However, see how B is distributed within the parentheses. We have to pull it out undistribute the 4. And if I undistribute the 4, then 3 pi will automatically have a 4 in the denominator. If this made sense, great. If it didn't, ask me in, in during class. Uh, but basically the concept is if I, if the 4 is distributed, then I'll have 4x, right? And then if you distribute with that, the 4 and the 4 cancel, and we end up with 3 pi. And that's what we want because that's what is in the original equation. If I don't put the 4 underneath it, then I will I'm changing the original equation. I can't do that. Now, if you see, b is still 4, but c is 3 pi over 4. If I don't do that, then I'll get wrong c value. And then d, obviously, is up 1. Oh, what did that do? So d is up 1, so shifted up 1. And period, we didn't find period. Period is 2 pi over b which is 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. When we try to graph it, this is going to be very different. It's got everything going on. This is a faster wave, higher amplitude, um, shifted to the left 3 quarters, and shifted up 1. Okay. Um, oh, backwards. Okay, I'm, I'm going to come back and do this graph or show you in classroom. Uh, because this video is going to get super long. We have to do backwards given a graph. Can I come up with the equation of the graph? This one is telling you to use cosine. So we don't have no choice but to use the cosine graph. So for cosine, again, keep in mind, cosine is the V, right? So find V and highlight it, wherever you want to highlight it from. Honestly, in this graph, this is the only V, a, a complete V available to us, right? If I can find again A, B, C, D, then I can put the equation together. A clearly is 2. And the portion that I've highlighted is V. So this is not negative. It's not flipped. Uh, B, on the other hand, to find B, I need to know period. And period, thankfully, is listed as 4. 
Hence, I can find b as 2 pi over p, which is 4, so b is pi over 2. Now, this question does have obviously have c, right? Because it has shifted to the left. You can see, usually, cosine has maximum here, and then it goes this way, right? This one has shifted to the left. The maximum point has moved to the left. By how much? 1. So, left is positive, right is negative. D, how do I know there's no D? Original cosine is wrapped around X. This one is also wrapped around X. So there's no vertical shift. Now I have all of them. I'm going to put the equation together. Plus 1 represents to the left. And no D available. So there we go. Here is the equation of this graph. One more. Yeah, one more. Let's do one more. This one, again, we're looking for cosine. Cosine, so highlight V wherever you can find a complete cycle of V. And there it is. A, obviously 3. B, can't find it directly. I have to use the period route. Period is 1. So B has to be 2 pi over 1, which is the same. C, is there a horizontal shift? maximum is on y-axis so there's no horizontal shift from as, as far as cosine goes if we were writing a sine equation for it then yes there would have been a horizontal shift so none and d is also none because it's still wrapped around x-axis and there is the equation for this one all right, I will go ahead and wrap it up here. I do have some more examples, but I just don't want the video to be too long. Go ahead and attempt these. You can pause the video here, attempt them, and I can go ahead and write the answer if you want to compare the answer to this. This one has a choice, so I'm going to write sign. All right, here we go. All right.